We got a great show today. Josh Gordon has been reinstated. We have a mock draft, the final one of the year on today's show. Make sure you check it out. Oh, it is draft week for so many people out there. This is the time. This is the week where you're going to squeeze and get the beautiful juice out of your draft. Squeeze the ultimate draft kit. Go to <laughs> ultimate draft kit right now. Give it a squeeze. Give, Give it, it a squeeze. squeeze. Look at the <laughs> player profile videos. Look at all the blurbs on all the players, the tier-based rankings. Get everything you need. Squeeze that beautiful, precious victory out of your draft at ultimatedraftkit.com. And Foot Clan, did you know that Spotify can be used in your car? Get all your favorite music now on the road with you and all your favorite podcasts as well. No need to switch between apps. Your Daily Drive is a brand new playlist, a mix of music and news made just for you. It's the best thing to happen in cars since the stereo. Take Spotify for a ride in your car today. Learn more at Spotify.com slash drive. Hey, what's up? This is Justice Hill from the Baltimore Ravens, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Squeeze the UDK. That was quite the uh, quite the UDK promotion, Jason. You are so gifted with words. Thank you. Thank is you. the juice worth the squeeze? It oh. is with the UDK. <laughs> <laughs> it's the juice worth the squeeze. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm Andy Holloway, joined as always by Jason Moore and Mike, the fantasy hitman right. It is Monday, August 19th. We have a great show for you. Our final mock draft Ho! episode of the season. Log a ding dong. We've got a great quick question. We have some news that's been breaking. Josh Gordon, Antonio Brown may or may not be happy at this moment. Uh, so much going on. We got news. We got footballers news too. We do. We've got the Megala Bowl going on right now for uh, all the Foot Clan. There's over 3,500 of you in the Megala Bowl tournament right now. Oi! And you can find that at jointhefoot.com. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. This is the biggest draft week of the year, culminating in the biggest draft day of the year, which will be Saturday. Yes. We have a live show Saturday Ooh. in Phoenix. Man, this this week is bananas. Which is a bold predictions episode. And so this is go time. I mean, we got preseason week two in the books other than tonight. Will a real Dante Pettis please stand up tonight? Oh, yeah. We'll yes, find out will. about that. And uh, we, have, we have other news. I mean, Mike, you said you were going to mention a little something something. I was, if you're not on the social medias, which, what are you doing? Follow at the FF Ballers. Along with this beautiful podcast that you listen to each and every weekday, now on Thursdays, during drive time, we will also have a live show on Sirius XM. You ever wanted to call and chat with us live on the air? Now you'll be able to do that on Sirius XM. Very, very excited for it. Clearly... They don't know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Jason, but it's too late. Jason live oh. for two hours. Watch out, ear. So that's on <laughs> buds. <laughs> Watch out, ears. <laughs> oh, good one. Thank you. Uh, that'll be live uh, basically right before Thursday Night Football throughout yep. the season. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. So um, that'll be in addition to all the podcast stuff that we're doing. Podcast is going nowhere. No. Nope. It's staying right here. Yeah. In your ears. In your ears. All right. Here's the quick question of the day. We got news. Big news. The NFL reinstating Patriots wide receiver Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon is back. We've said it before. We're saying it again. Josh Gordon is back. What is his fantasy value and impact on the other Patriots players? Where did you rank him? Who does it hurt? Who does it help? I need three more questions. Um, Can you get three more questions out of the Josh Gordon news? There's one. 
Is Nikhil Harry still your number one pick for dynasty drafts? Oh, there's two. Okay. Is Bill Belichick a big Josh Gordon fan? Oh, he did it. Number three. Oh. Look, I'll jump in here. My initial rankings of Josh Gordon, he he came in at 39. That I need more news to know is like because it's a conditional reinstatement. We still need more things to unfold. As in, is this all still all seasons seasons all cylinders go for week one? If it is, then Josh Gordon will actually move up in my he, rankings. Last year, I say last year in games where Rob Gronkowski did not play. You saw a monster uptick in Josh Gordon production. You're talking an extra 30 yards a game, an extra three targets a game. Like we we've talked about, who's going to be the fill-in? Who's who's going to you know fill those holes for for Tom Brady with Rob Gronkowski out? And Josh Gordon, well, you couldn't put him in the equation because of his uh, being on the commissioner's list, not being able to play. We don't know if he's going to come back. But now that he is back, the answer to who will fill in that hole the most is Josh Gordon for me I don't disagree and he had as impressive of a 12 game debut in the Patriots offensive system as a player can have last year missed obviously the three playoff games missed the last two regular season games as well it has a big impact to me on Nikhil Harry's upside for the season if Josh Gordon's on the field well so does his surgery Nikhil Harry's recent surgery. Nikhil Harry, yeah. I mean, you, in Dynasty Leagues, are you adjusting your perspective on Harry? I still think Harry is great, will be great. But if I'm if I'm in a rookie draft right now, I'm going to take one of the running backs at number one just because I want to soak up that value immediately. And now and now Harry's path to immediate, uh, immediate fantasy value, I think, is diminished. Okay. Uh, Julian Edelman, Mike, you're the most bullish in the office. Um, I think it has little impact on him. I think it I has. Agree. I think it helps Brady. Yes, give him a reliable target when you lose Gronkowski and such. Yeah, I mean it's it's good. And and the the reality is, if you're doing a draft right now, Josh Gordon, it's going to take him a while to get all the way up to his peak ADP. That's what happens whenever a player comes in. People don't know where to draft him. Should I take him in the oh the seventh, the sixth, the fifth? Then eventually people start taking him in the the fourth or or around there. But I do want to caution people, right? Now, as of right now, I believe he's full go for week one. He can't play in this preseason uh, game, but he is ready to go for week one. We haven't heard from the Patriots if he's just the de facto starter yet. But he's not without risk, right? Like, we have many years of Josh Gordon on and off the field. He has been reinstated many times before and never, unfortunately, been able to stick with it. So everyone that is just like, oh, he's going to be – the clear number one for the Patriots, and you're getting him at a value. I just, I, I, I caution you that I hope he. I mean, for the man, I really hope he can stick with it, have a great season. I, I look if he finishes this year with 16 games, it will be the first time he does so since his rookie season in 2012. Also, I was thinking of of DK Metcalf. With the knee surgery, that was the recent news. Harry's been banged up, but no surgery. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was confusing the K sound. Um, <laughs> you don't want to do that, Mike. Uh, <laughs> just to piggyback on what you're saying, Jason, I, I look at it as an opportunity to trade Josh Gordon. I sure. mean, that, that's kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. If you've got him in I, dynasty, that's the way I'm looking at it. Is okay. I have somebody I could trade now. Can I'm, you do it though? I've had people come after him. Oh, I've had have three you? or four people come after him right away. But are they low ball offers? Yes. Yeah, has anyone come with anything substantial for him? Yeah, they've been okay. I mean, there's been a couple of okay ones. People love the mystery. They love the one. Josh Gordon has done the things that fantasy owners need a player to do to get them hot and bothered, which is have a number one fantasy season at the wide receiver position, run rough shot over defensive and uh, defensive backs. Last year, even eighteen a catch for Josh Gordon. He just lives down the field. He may, and now, 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 who's the best red zone weapon that this team has? Josh Gordon, could be. Yeah, I could still. Stay I mean, he's with, in I that. still stick with Jules, but yeah. But if you gave me sixteen games for both players, I think Gordon has more touchdowns. Than yeah, oh, yeah, element. yeah. I'll, so that's fine. All right, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, one game, a pre, you know, one preseason game, a career does not make. But Jacoby Brissett looked really, really good. That was one of my takeaways from week two. 
Eight for 10, a touchdown to Ebron. There's a chance Jacoby uh, Beef Brisket oh. has to start week one. So you like seeing him out. He's he's one of my favorite backups in football. I think he's yes. a top three backup. Um, he's actually competent as a backup. However, the biggest takeaway from that game to me was the footage of Andrew Luck actually warming up, yes. doing some lateral drills. Did he have the uh, Duke in his hand, Mike? He had. Look. Was it a full size football? Oh, wait, that was last year. Yeah, Sorry. that was. That's the problem last year. I have I've moved. I got maybe this is just a snap reaction, but I've got Andrew Luck back up. I think after seeing that and the way that they're handling him, I think he's going to be ready week one. It's a fun and ride. I know, I know a that's a rubber ride. band. Like, trust me, I I get it that we're all over the place with Andrew Luck, but the Colts are all over the place with Andrew Luck. It's really hard to get an actual pulse on what's happening. All right, um, other takeaways from preseason week two. I loved what I saw from David Montgomery in week two. <laughs> it's genuine. Which was nothing. Which was because 100% he didn't play. nothing. They didn't play him. That in, in preseason. Or Cohen, by the way. Right. In preseason, it, here's what the, the, the tiered rankings of what matters for running backs. Tier one, they didn't play. Tier two, they get the first snap. You know what I mean? Like, yes. it, if you're not playing, that means the coach is like, yeah, I, I need you for the team. You're not messing with this preseason game. You know who else didn't play? Malcolm Brown. Malcolm yeah. Brown didn't play. He Malcolm is, Brown is the handcuff for Todd Gurley. 100%. I am in agreement at this point that Malcolm Brown is the handcuff. He would be the more valuable option. And, I, I you know, everything going on with uh, Daryl Henderson – a.k.a. Darnell Anderson. Um, <laughs> Stop. He's, I'm never going to let it die. Um, I, I can't imagine drafting him anywhere near where his ADP is. It should be falling. It's just a, it's a risky pick. You're, you're really betting on something that none of the evidence is pointing to through camp and preseason. I'd say, and you do have some NFL coaches that go the other direction of the, I'm not going to play anybody, like the Pittsburgh Steelers where you saw, I think it was 14 snaps of the first team, off, first team offense. It was all James Conner, and it was all Vance McDonald. I mean, I th I think Every snap. I think you're secured, and that includes Vance McDonald fumbled right away trying to run somebody over. I think you're, the way that we view Vance McDonald has to go from maybe he's maybe he's the guy, we like everything points to it, Jesse James is gone. He's, he's the guy. He is the primary starting tight end, the full-time guy for this team. A team that needs pass catching weapons. Yes. So I, I'm not. It's still tough to chase him at the ADP that he has gotten to, but I'm at least far more comfortable with it now than I was two weeks ago. I was I was engaging in trade discussions throughout the weekend that circled around me giving up Vance McDonald, getting back OJ Howard in a big dynasty trade. But I was interesting. I was obviously including a lot more. Right. And I questioned the whole time, you know, like, I want to buy O.J. Howard before the breakout. But do I, do I want to sell Vance before the breakout? The age thing is really what convinced me to do it as well. But, yeah, it, it was encouraging to see that. The snap counts for first-team offense are interesting. Right. You know Connor's the guy in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh. In Seattle, there were 17 snaps with Russell Wilson on the field. Chris Carson took 14 of them. Carson's going to be ridiculous. Rashad Penny took three. Chris Carson was targeted. Chris yeah. Carson. I think Chris be a Carson beast. had like fifty percent of the opportunities of of those plays. When I made my Dante Pettis pivot, you know, there's a certain amount of love a, a father bestows upon his three my guys. Most of the love that I took from Pettis, I just gave to Carson. He's got like a double <laughs> heaping of love from me. Um, it's well deserved. We have to address something that took place in Detroit. There were sure yes. There were three. Uh, basically starter drives with carry on Johnson and the, the running backs in Detroit carry on Johnson came off the field on all three drives for third down. The first two CJ Anderson took the third downs. The third time it was Ty Johnson who some in Detroit, if you listen, believe is a very capable theoretic replacement. Where are you with, what took place, Jason? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was watching it. I tweeted it out because I, I know everyone's looking, uh, you know, this direction for all the carry-on Johnson takes. It, I mean, it will be a backfield that is split up. 
there's yeah, it, you've never said anything to the contrary. I that. hoped that maybe Daryl Bevel would, for some reason, just make it a workhorse. But uh, you know, the pass catching is the real question mark here. I do still expect Carryon Johnson to have uh, a very large role in the passing game. He's great at it. Um, he was clearly still the starter on each drive. He was clearly and statistically the best running back there. But the the thing I didn't like was seeing Carryon Johnson into the second quarter. That was like, look, if you want to rest these guys, if you're you know, if your coach, Mister, I, I want to share the work. Get these starters out of the game, but uh, I, I mean, I still have Carry On Johnson right now as a top twelve running back, and that is on the back of a very, very shared workload. I, I don't think I've even got him down for two hundred and ten carries, so I don't think he's a workhorse back. He's just so efficient; he's going to end up being a top twelve running back. To me, it validated a little bit of the concerns about pass protection. They they've been sure. around camp. And then he wasn't on the field on third down where C.J. Anderson, you know, maybe they're leaning on him for pass protection. Uh, he's definitely the best runner on the team. We'll see. I, I, if he doesn't catch the ball as much as, as we hope, he's going to have to score. One of those two things has to happen. Antonio Brown, not in Raiders camp over frustration with the helmet once again. Um, Proving the NFL right that the helmet was an issue. <laughs> well... This is just Antonio Brown at this point in time. This is not the same player from six years ago. That was, you know, uh, by all accounts, everyone around, humble, hardworking, out there, do it. Now the wind blows a certain direction and you have questions and you can see the frustration on Mike Mayock, John Gruden. Basically they say, hey, is he all in or is he all out? Drew Rosenhaus this morning comes out. He'll be back in camp soon. He hasn't really left camp. He just didn't come to practice. I I mean, that's the news. <laughs> so so bizarre. Look, Antonio Brown, after the trade happened and with, with the contract extension, he should have just told Gruden, look, I'm not coming to training camp. I don't want to be there. I'll be there week one. Just go with that and let's move away from this nonsense. But now... As a fantasy owner, when do you take him? Do you take him? Oh man, oh, it's not man. like there weren't question marks. And, and more importantly, this is this is the headline we haven't talked about. Are you taking Tyrell Williams sooner than you than you had thought? He's looked great in camp. He's looked great in the preseason. If Antonio Brown flies off into the sunset in a hot air balloon, what Tyrell is the number one receiver on the Raiders? Yeah, he he certainly could be. I, it, if Antonio Brown does grab that hot air balloon, I mean, it makes Darren Walleris oh, far yes. more interesting. Who, if you if you didn't see his couple snaps in uh, in preseason, he's looked great. He so, should have had a touchdown when yes, he was wide, wide open, open, but the backup quarterback threw it to the moon um, out of the my, end zone. My whiskers were tingling <laughs> watching Darren. <laughs> Waller is run down. I, I would field. agree. That's the guy I want to take a shot on because while Tyrell Williams could be more relevant on a target basis than Darren Waller, he's a wide receiver where there's a, a million wide receivers out there in the draft. At tight end, if Darren Waller has relevance, it's going to be much more valuable than Tyrell Williams' uh, relevance. Shout out to Tyrell and Best Ball. Sure. Yeah. Um, all right. A couple. Quick things. we got to get through it. We've got a big mock draft show today. Keenan Allen is dealing with an ankle injury. Do you have concern based on injury history? Keenan Allen being banged up. This is coming up over and over again. It's highly unfortunate, and he's expected to be rested for the the duration now of the preseason. He should be ready week one. But Talk uh, about a different uh, offense with no Melvin Gordon, Keenan Allen in week one if that yes. was to, to take place. Yes, um, DK Metcalf, yes, rookie not wide receiver, not Nikhil Harry. Yeah, DK Metcalf needs knee surgery, which is this is ridiculous. Of the the timeline that they have given him for a surgery, I don't. It doesn't matter what it is. A, when knee, like, a knee scope, a cleanup like, procedure. They went into his knee with medical tools and they did things like it's. He's not going to be ready. Yeah, we're we're already into you know week two, heading into week three of the preseason. I I don't think he's going to be ready if they're doing a surgery on his knee by week one, even if it's just a clean up little scope. It 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 certainly you know it obviously hurts his 
ob- early season outlook. I mean, we always say Jerron don't Brown. I was going to bring up the name Jerron Brown, who yes. he kind of balled out there over the in the preseason week two. He's the veteran. I I I don't see the Seahawks passing game as one where the you know look David Moore and Jerron Brown and all these other ancillary pieces maybe someone will step up on a game to game basis but to me I am I almost made Tyler Lockett one of my my guys because I really really believe Tyler Lockett is going to be a very good fantasy wide receiver this season I just don't understand how he couldn't and now with DK Metcalf out of the way I think he's going to be hyper targeted. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you, as always, by the Sleeper app. Before we get into the mock draft, which we're just about to do, 12-team mock draft, sixth spot, I'll give you the details. We want to thank today's sponsors, and I've never wanted to thank today's sponsor more than I do right now. Oh, my goodness. Because I can't comprehend that I get to talk about this. Get ready, people, to return to an era lost to legend and my As a run! my past. I'm coming! And Mike's past <laughs> because World of Warcraft Classic is arriving on August 27th. Yes! I won't be here for this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, this is the 15th anniversary of World of Warcraft. They're bringing World of Warcraft Classic back. Return to the world of Azeroth, Mike. Shout out to all my druids out there. Mike and I have spent some days <laughs> yes. in the distant past uh, flying around Azeroth. And uh, it, it look, it's back, baby. Fight for the Horde or the Alliance in the ongoing struggle. Or, or the Horde. Between I mean, do it right. South Shore and uh, Terran Mill. Look, World of Warcraft Classic. What else? What What do you want? I... Get ready, Mike, for uh, Blackwing Lair. Oh, you want to get back in? Yes. There's so much more to discover. I thought I'd never get to see those uh, Thousand Needles again, Mike, but I will. WoW Classic is included with your regular World of Warcraft subscription at no extra charge, so you can switch between the original experience and the latest content. WoW subscribers can reserve their character name right now, so you can uh, you can Excuse get in there. Me? Get ready. <laughs> check out. Check it out. Here's the here's the address you need to know. WowClassic.com slash fantasy footballers. Who'd have thought, Mike? Who'd have thought? Not me. This is amazing. <laughs> and, and Foot Clan, we really want to thank another sponsor. We're talking White Castle. Yes. We don't want to just yes. thank them for wow sponsoring. Wow for me and Mike and White Castle for Jason. <laughs> we want to thank them for being super delicious. delicious. Uh, look, White Castles are amazing. The little, the, the, uh, they've perfected. The slider, the little cheeseburger on the bed of onions, they're so good, and they have such a unique taste. And we, unfortunately, live out in Arizona where we can't always have them, but White Castle can be found and made at home from your grocery store, and they taste just as good. They are awesome. That one-of-a-kind taste. I Look, I could put down a box of six, no problemo. And we're, we're going to be watching a lot of games here in the studio. We're going to have some White Castle burgers. They are fantastic. Uh, I could – the problem with White Castle, if I can – You have a lot of memories over the last 15 something with years. White Castle, with- is you can eat them infinity. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, just – I love them. Look, from the castle or the grocery store, you can satisfy your crave – anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get a dollar off the purchase of any four or six pack White Castle sliders. Delicious. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. I just uh, resubscribed. Excellent. Live on the show. Excellent work, my friend. Reserve that name. See you in a few years. (laughs) All right, we are... We're doing our final mock draft of the preseason. It's going to be a good one. 12 team, half PPR. We're drafting together. United we stand. And uh, we get to draft from the sixth spot, guys. And honestly, to me, the the five and the sixth spot, with everything that has happened, has become extremely difficult. It was earlier on in the preseason. This thing was easy. It was Melvin Gordon, no problem. David Johnson is the backup to that, no problem. Here we are, Melvin Gordon. The talks have not pro, uh, progressed, and I've I know it was only we're only two weeks, so there's they have a chance to 
impress me, but I've moved David Johnson down a little bit. I haven't abandoned him out of my top 10 or anything like that, but I have moved him down. I now have, uh, I now have James Conner above David Johnson. There are, I think that's, that's fair. You can make that, you can make that decision, that determination. I think that any, my, my only thought on that is that if you believed ever, if you ever believe in the offense that Cliff Kingsbury is bringing, you shouldn't have a reason to change that belief. It's not, it's not the offense. It's watching David Johnson play. He, on all the handoffs, David Johnson has not looked explosive. Watch David Johnson take a, that, a handoff last week. Watch Joe Mixon take a handoff. There is a very big difference in the explosiveness right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if we're just we uh, we misremember who David Johnson was from those three years ago. Maybe those three years of time have taken the toll and take and zapped DJ of a little bit of that. But I I moved him down. I'm, having said all this, I've got DJ down at number six now. But James Conner ADP wise is a bit of a reach right here. Obviously, you wouldn't get him in the second round if you don't take him here. But I'm just saying that th this decision here has become far more difficult than it was three or four weeks ago. Yeah, if, if, we, if we don't like David Johnson and there was a clear other guy, James Conner to you, maybe Lev Bell, maybe Dalvin Cook, maybe uh, Nick Chubb or Todd Gurley. Nick Gurley, yeah. They're all in this nebulous realm. So does that mean if you're sitting on the clock at six like we are, you look to someone who is a sure thing? That has no question mark. Someone like Devontae Adams at wide receiver. Well, I, I haven't got to go through who's been drafted yet. Alvin Kamara, 101. Christian McCaffrey with the second pick. Then Barkley. DeAndre Hopkins off the board at four. Ahead of Zeke. Zeke at five. And here we are at six. So, as you said, Devontae Adams on the on the board. David Johnson. Lev Bell. Nick Chubb. Julio Jones. See, I like Chubb more than Connor. And that's, that's fine. Uh, but right now, jumping off the page, I mean, if you're hesitant about David Johnson here, if you don't want to, him to be the backbone of your team uh, on this August 19th Monday, where would you like to go with the pick? Uh, but for me, it would be between James Conner or Devontae Adams. Uh, I, you may just want to take your number one wide receiver who happens to be available here, uh, but but we, we obviously share this pick. I think... If this really was my own team, I would just go James Conner. But I'm comfortable. Team. I'm comfortable with DJ above Conner and Chubb. Jason, why don't you make the pick for us? All right, yeah, I'm going to do this one. You know, a lot of times we'll we'll play with mock drafts. We'll say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to try something new out. I'm going to try something different. I am taking this draft as if this was my team, and I really am trying to avoid risk in that first round. I prefer having a running back. I do. But I prefer having a player I'm super confident in that I'm going to get value out of. So I would take Devontae Adams. He's my number one ranked wide receiver to get him at the six. I, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself pivoting to wide receiver earlier and earlier. This is where I hope I am further in the first round. You know, I, I, I would prefer to have the 10th pick where <laughs> all those running backs that I'm considering at the fifth or sixth are still there. All right. After Adams, which I did select on our behalf, Jason. David Johnson, James Conner, Michael Thomas, Lev Bell, Nick Chubb in the first round, Julio Jones at 112. Coming back, Juju, Tyreek, Beckham, Gurley, Evans, Cook. We're on the clock. When you look at the running backs, there's uh, really one guy to consider for me, and that's Joe Mixon. You also have Damian Williams, on Johnson, Leonard Fournette, Melvin Gordon, but the last remaining guy of a tier that I believe in is Joe Mixon. Led the AFC in rushing last season. Looked explosive in the preseason. I think it'll be tough sledding. But no more tough sledding for Mixon than it could be in Arizona for David Johnson. It's about workload. It's about involvement in the passing game. At wide receiver, you've got A.B., you've got Allen, you've got Thielen. This pick's easy for me. This pick's Joe Mixon. This pick is... Uh... It's not easy for me because it comes down to three players where I'm considering it going Mixon. Freeman? Uh, no, because I'm going to play the ADP game. I'm going to try and see if he will come back to me. And it, it, actually, it would go Damian Williams, Travis Kelsey, Joe Mixon. Those are the three guys I'm considering. Speaking of Damian Williams, if we're trying to read anything into the preseason, 
He saw all five snaps of the first drive for the Chiefs, and then they put him on ice, uh, which I'm reading as he's still locked in as the number one guy because they, they left Carlos Hyde out there for a while. Uh, if, I, if I'm going running back, I'm going to take Damian, but do you want to pay up for Travis Kelsey, who should have – he's our number one tight end, should be in line for another fantastic season. Jason we, we Howard – We haven't taken – we've never taken Kelsey in our mocks. We've never mm -hmm. taken a tight end in our mocks. So that would be something you could think about. Um, I don't believe in Damian Williams. Yeah, so we, we're, we have we're a not very gonna, different opinion. We're not going to agree on that. I think Damian Williams is far too risky to be our one. Um, yeah, to me, it's between uh, Kelsey and and Mixon. Mixon would be the running back of choice here. I've moved him down a little bit from the <coughs> elite of the elite because of the offensive line worries. But like you just said, I mean, he's he's in the same group with a lot of these other guys. David Johnson, who we considered taking last round. Who's going to have a better year? Uh, I mean, maybe DJ, but it's super close. So I would be fine taking Joe do Mixon you if you want to lock up the running back. Where do you have Freeman ranked right now? Devonta Freeman running back for the Atlanta Falcons. I have Freeman as my running back 17. Okay. Where do you have him, Mike? I have him 10, and I have Joe Mixon at 13. Uh, where I say I'd rather play the ADP game and see if I have them. See if he gets I have back. them 12 and 13. Who's ahead? Mixon. Okay. I have them 12 and 13. I, I believe in Devonta Freeman. I do. Um, I went with Mixon, though, because I've got him ranked higher. I think we should stick with the running back position and not, not gamble too much here. Kelsey went next. Damian Williams, Antonio Brown, Patrick Mahomes. Carry on at 212. Mike, the gamble almost worked. We almost got Freeman back to us, but he did not. Fournette goes at 301. I've been rising on Fournette. Hmm. Um. <clears throat> Mostly because I, I think we've been talking about a little bit more optimism with the uh, Jags offense. Sure. Thielen, king of the preseason, Adam Thielen. Aaron <laughs> Jones, Devonta Freeman, T.Y. Hilton, and we're back on the clock. We have Adams. We have Mixon. You've got Keenan Allen, Melvin Gordon. A couple chargers still sitting there in the middle of the third round. Would now, you really consider Melvin Gordon here? No. Okay. I don't think so. I wouldn't. I don't think so. Not... Uh, I might consider I might have considered him here if we had Zeke. You know, if, if Zeke had fallen to six. So, so you want to have no running backs week one? <laughs> you go that's, all in. <laughs> that's a good point. My all I, I, all I meant is if I had a stalwart running back in the first round versus going in the second round with a running back. Uh, I picked six, I picked Zeke because he was at five and we were at six. But who are you thinking? I mean, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson. I'm willing to reach on Chris Carson all the way into the third round now. Well, right now, Chris Carson is, uh, according to this ADP, the back of the third round. Woo! He would basically be at the turn. Yeah, you're not. I don't think I'm going to get him if I don't he take him He has boarded a rocket ship. Yeah, and I think it's deservedly so. I mean, he he's the guy, to me, that is my highest-ranked running back currently on the board. I have him one spot ahead of Devonta Freeman. I've got him as my running back 16. So while it's much higher than we've seen Chris Carson go over the – you know the the off season. Look, he's he's on a offense that wants to run the ball, and he is going to be the man. They're talking about getting him more and more involved in the passing game. We've seen it in camp. We've seen it in preseason. We've heard it, right? We've heard it from sources. Well, and they, close I mean, to the team, they've talked about how great his hands are. So let, let's see if they actually utilize him. Uh, if if this were my team, I would be going with a running back because I'm going to play the game of one of these wide receivers could come back. We're talking Keenan. Um, I guess I'm still confident in taking him. Diggs, Edelman, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, those five guys, I believe that one of them will come back. This could bite us in the butt because we're right in the middle middle, middle of the round. But but while we, when we look at the running back position – one, the tiers are getting a little bit more nebulous here in the third round. If you don't, it would be between man. Jacobs if you don't take Chris, Chris Carson, Carson here, if you don't, you don't get him. If you, if you don't, don't take him, well, sure. But I'm I'm just trying to bring to light some of the names you're going to be choosing from next round. I mean, if you don't get him here, you're probably having to look at. You know, does Derrick Henry make it back around? Probably Gross. not. Does Mark Ingram? Is Mark Ingram your RB two on a mix in led uh, running back court? You is could it, get Sony. You might be able to get Sony. Sony or Coleman. 
Right. I mean, Coleman is still going a little bit later in drafts, and I, I, I love Tevin Coleman as an RB2. I'd be happy taking Carson, and then if, the, if those two guys that we love come back around, taking them as well. All right, we'll take Carson. All right, Carson, off the board, Marlon Mack, Melvin Gordon, Josh Jacobs, Keenan Allen goes next, David Montgomery. I think, Brooks, you pointed out David Montgomery has passed Josh Jacobs in average draft position yeah. this past weekend. Third, Yeah, third round. That is wild, man. I think it's fine. Oh, I think it doesn't it's... bother me. I mean, it doesn't bo- does it, it bother you? No, it's. I just think it's wild. I mean, just that it happened. The, the, here's the thing. David Montgomery is getting love. I mean, he's gotten a ton of love on this show. A lot of our friends in the fantasy industry are giving David Montgomery love. Josh Jacobs was still a first round pick, and not just we're not just talking a Rashad Penny, where where he Penny was a first round pick, but there was some other guys on the team that they liked. Josh Jacobs is the guy for Oakland. I mean, it's his role is far more secured to me. Where as as in we're just talking risk. Another article came out today talking. It seems the whispers from the bushes are confirming what we kind of thought that they really hope that David Montgomery becomes a three down guy. But Josh Jacobs was brought in to be that player. So it's just wild to me that that they're going right next to each other. Do you think that has to do with confidence in the in the organization? It certainly could. It's the the publicity and the news on the Raiders it's not been positive. Yeah, you take at the all. Bears offense over the Raiders offense. I think that's the reason you're seeing the flip. But I do I do completely understand the the more secured works uh, appears to be Josh Jacobs because of Tariq Cohen. All right, um, fourth round, Ertz and Kittle go before us. Henry and Michelle before us. Cooper and Edelman as well. So we're sitting here. You've got your choice of Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods from the Los Angeles wide receiver core. Godwin, Lockett, A.J. Green in the fourth round. If you feel like waiting a few weeks, you've got – Tevin Coleman still on the board. You mentioned it, Mike. I think you know Coleman is somebody that is being undervalued. Yes, due to the fact that there are multiple running backs in San Francisco, and probably because people expected more when they actually did play him last year. Miles Sanders is still there. I would love. I think the play here is to go wide receiver, and then see if somebody like Miles Sanders comes back in the next round. Yeah, we our running backs are already pretty solid here between Mixon and Chris Carson. It's a great starting core. Where are you at, Jay? Yeah, I, so I, I look, there's a couple of players that, that I like. Obviously, Robert Woods, this is where I would be taking him. I would take Woods. He's, he's a top-tier wide receiver for me. Um, but I also love Tyler Lockett, and maybe he could get back to me next round. Uh, that would be that would be a little dicey. You'd, you know, you have but, Lockett, and you, you have him close to I have where Lockett you have Robert as my Woods. wide receiver 17. So Robert Woods wow. is is, is but, higher, but I I think Lockett is freshly unrolled Tyler Lockett poster above his bed. Yeah. yeah, no, and and then at running back, you know we that that's where okay, do you maybe go on the Coleman, ceiling? Maybe above his bed on the Lockett. ceiling. <laughs> to me, if I if you know if this pick was mine, I would take my guy Robert Woods. I would be fine taking the gamble, taking Tevin Coleman, and hoping Lockett gets back over Woods here. So like you're saying, you're saying you would prefer. Or you're if, interested in going Coleman here, pad up the three running backs. Let me put hope it, Lockett gets back and just me, and forfeiting Robert Woods. No, I I'm saying if it was solely my pick, I would take Woods, but okay, I'm fine okay. going Coleman and taking the gamble that Lockett gets back. Robert Woods and Miles Sanders, or Tevin Coleman and Tyler Lockett. I mean, to me, that's a no brainer. I'd rather have the Woods Sanders side. Yes. Yeah. Um, before I click the button for Robert Woods, which I'm happy to do. What do you make of another season for Brandon Cooks in the same offense? I mean, we joke about the fact that he's never had the opportunity to do this very often. He's been traded, but yet puts up 1,000-plus yards. A lot of credit is given Robert Woods, duly so, that he had a chance to come in and learn the McVay system and, and then contribute in a bigger way. What about Brandon Cooks? Is there a ceiling for Brandon Cooks that we're not aware of? Yeah, I mean, the ceiling between these two players, Brandon Cooks is higher. I think most people would say that, and I think all three of us would say the ceiling is higher yeah. for Brandon Cooks. It's a matter of consistency for me. That That's what I love about Robert Woods. I feel like he is the number one uh, read in the offense, and so he'll end up as the number one target. He'll be more consistent on a week-to-week basis. I like both guys. If, if Woods was gone, I would take Brandon Cooks. I'd be happy to have him here. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I just like the consistency of 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 Bob Woods. If you look, at, if you look at our roster, which is Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon, Chris Carson, Robert Woods, it's hard to argue that there isn't a volume guarantee in production here, right? I mean, like Adams, volume. And, I mean, Mixon and Carson, volume. They they could lead each of their conferences in carries. It's possible. And then yeah. Woods is very consistent. So I like the foundation, the consistency, uh, the week to week, the upside that's built into our team. If you have to break down upside, downside, the upside that I see is somebody like Carson developing as a pass catcher, being more valuable than that mid third round pick. Downside would be, you know, the offense in Cincinnati, mix and sharing more third down work with Gio Bernard than we would want. But. Ultimately, I think there's a lot of guaranteed production on this roster. Godwin, Ing Ingram, Cooks, Galladay, Lindsey finishing the fourth round. Lockett, Mike Williams, Cooper Cup, O.J. Howard, Tyler Boyd, and then we're on the clock at the 506. The past two rounds have been delightful for our strategy where with, with once we took Chris Carson, there was a mini running back run, and then we took Woods, and then it, it turned into a wide receiver run. So the the – the running back targets that we were looking at, they're Tevin, both there. Yeah, Tevin Coleman, who we were considering last round, is still there. I mean, I, go ahead. I, to me, that that would be an easy pick here in the fifth round to get a guy who is the starter for a Kyle Shanahan offense. I mean, Matt Burita last year when he was the main guy was very fantasy relevant. I think Coleman brought in clearly the starter right now from camp. He's the guy now. Is his upside as much as Miles Sanders? No, but that would take Miles Sanders becoming something that he is currently not a bell cow for a team that has not used him that way. So I would take the more sure thing in, in what I perceive to be Tevin Coleman. To be clear with what you were saying, you're saying a team that hasn't used a running back in that fashion, not Miles Sanders specific. Correct. And I have Tevin Coleman at 22. I have Miles Sanders at 25. I could see drafting either guy depending on how – you you know you're building your roster. I want to bring AJ Green's name up in the middle of the fifth round. It's not often you get a draft AJ Green in the middle of the fifth round. He's there Man. on the board. So are you? Would you consider him? Um, I might consider him con based off of the safety of our team. Where uh, like you were, we just ran through it. The four players that we have in volume <clears throat> seem extremely safe. But even even having said that, with the upside of AJ Green, I'm still going to take Coleman here. How, how big a difference does it make if you have an IR spot or not? Because a lot of people ask that to us: Should I draft sure. AJ Significant. Green because yeah. I have an IR spot? Yeah. Do we have an IR spot in this mock, Brooks? I don't think so. So the the thing about <laughs> breaking news. I really like that button sometimes. Was it the breaking news that we don't have an IR spot? The breaking mm -hmm. news is that Antonio Brown is practicing today. Ho oh ho! Incredible. So the, the ball bounced the right direction. Breaking news NFL player practicing. practicing. Well, you, I'll let you know if something changes before the end of the show. Yeah, the uh, the thing with the IR slot and someone like A.J. Green, like A.J. Green you're probably going to need to take right around here, fifth-round pick. The, the thing about an IR slot, that would let me take someone like Kareem Hunt, who I'm not even considering, if, if, he, could, if he could go in, which I know in some systems he can. But someone that's not coming back for a long time that's cheap as 10th rounder, then he's not clogging up your bench. But if you take A.J. Green in the fifth, it's not just that he's clogging up your bench, bench it's that he's he is actually the opportunity cost of who you're missing out on. You know, is Robbie Woods or, or Tevin Coleman or these other really valuable players. It's not just a matter of the bench spot that he takes up. I want you to find a new way to say Robert Woods' name every time you say it. Sometimes he's Robbie Woods. Sometimes he's Bob Woods. Sure. Rob the Bob. And I'm... And yeah. Tech... <laughs> Technically, the reason I said you that put was me because on the spot. I meant Robbie Anderson, who is oh. who is still on the clock. Well, that, oh, that's a yes. different name altogether. Oh, Bobby yes. Anderson. Uh, Tevin Coleman. We'll take Tevin Coleman. Now we've got a really interesting decision because Evan Ingram's off the board. We had a run of uh, quarterbacks. By the way, if you're on our YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, you can see the draft board taking place. We're using the sleeper app. AJ Green, Calvin Ridley. Rodgers, White, Mayfield, DJ Moore, Lamar Miller, Latavius Murray, Jarvis Landry, Alshon Jeffrey, and guess what, guys? Miles Sanders is back 
we can take him at six oh seven, and I want to. I want Over to Robbie take him Anderson. Here. Yes, I think it. I think we have the opportunity to add depth to a running back position that uh, isn't as deep as the wide receiver. I love Robbie Anderson. I love Robbie Anderson. But because we have Devontae Adams, because we went wide receiver round one, because we took Robert Woods, there's not a tandem more reliable than those two. My vote here would be Miles Sanders because of the stability of our team. I am fine you know, handing the pick off. If, if Mike wants to go my guy, Robbie Anderson, he can do so. But at this point, you're looking at, on a week-to-week basis, Mike, is the upside of drafting a Miles Sanders. You're talking about, is this going to be a flex player for you? Are you going to flex Robbie Anderson out? Or are you going to flex Miles Sanders out? Where are you leaning with the debate? It's it's difficult because, I mean, when we look at the running backs, it, Miles Sanders is the last of the potential starting guys by maybe week five, week six, all of a sudden. Doug Peterson has changed and Miles Sanders is is running in a three down role. I mean, it's in the realm of possibilities for a, a player they spent a second round pick on. But we are the team is would be very running back heavy at that point. And I like later This is your pick. Oh, perfect. I I, I like taking my shots. Like I I talked about my my JG Wentworth approach. I like taking my uh, the later shots on running backs to see if they if they hit early on and then pound that on the waiver wire if it doesn't work out, I would rather take who I consider to be a stud wide receiver, and that would be Robbie Anderson. All right, I will, I'll try one last time to sway you. Okay. Hypothetically, if you take Robbie Anderson here, I think that's fine. That's a good pick, middle of the sixth round. There are names that you're going to be able to get over the next two rounds that you might be Pretty happy filling in your wide receiver spot with Marvin Jones, Sammy sure. Watkins, Curtis Samuel, MBS. Yeah, there, there's guys that I'm happy with, but just the way that I view Robbie Anderson okay. this season, uh, I, I have Robbie Anderson as a as a top 20 player. Let me make one other uh, <gasps> comment. If you take Robbie Anderson, our team is balanced, right? Three right. running backs, three wide receivers. Should it come back around to us where we want a tight end, if we took the running back, I feel like we'd be – forced to take a wide receiver here because we'd have four running backs, only two wide receivers going into the seventh round. It might make things a little bit difficult. All right, we took Robbie. Miles Sanders went next. Then Christian Kirk, Austin Eckler, Darius Geis, Matt Ryan, Hunter Henry, Vance McDonald, carry on, or carry on Drake. Yeah, that's a new player. <laughs> Kenyon Drake. Dude, if you fused oh, carry on Johnson and Kenyon Drake, Jason would no longer exist. Carry on Drake. He would, mm. he would be... Shot into the ether realm. Yeah. That would be the only way to get like them the full workload. Right. <laughs> Thankfully. Oh, dude. oh, oh no. <laughs> Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz going at 7-5 uh, in this draft. A little I bit was... earlier than lately. Earlier than lately. <laughs> 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 it's true, though. It still makes sense. All right. We took Robbie Anderson. Some players on the board for us at the sixth pick of the seventh round. Tariq Cohen, Rashad Penny. We do have Carson. Um, that is a little bit of... I don't want to do it. Okay. Uh, who else do we got? We got Allen Robinson. We've got Will Fuller, Dante Pettis, Sammy Watkins, a pile of uh, wide receiver options. And then, so for me, this is the part of the draft where, look, I've I've talked about the regression coming for this player that I don't really love drafting him. But part of being a fantasy football player and a fantasy football analyst is I have to be open that things are going to go not the way I project them. Like I'm, I'm going to get some things wrong and Tariq Cohen is not normally around this slot in, in drafts in the middle of the seventh round, people snatch him up the five and the six. I, I, for me at this point, this is one of those swallow the pride, understand that, that, that Tariq Cohen could still be the player he was last year even with Mike Davis and David Montgomery coming on the team to siphon up that passing work. So I would take Cohen. All right, we'll take Cohen. <laughs> I figured it wouldn't be hard to talk you into we, Cohen. We have a few rounds to get through, so yeah, I made it easy once you said Tariq Cohen. Allen Robinson, Will Fuller, Jared Cook, and then uh, uh, Penny, Freeman, Howard to finish the round. I don't think fantasy owners know what to do with Jordan Howard right now at all. Mm-mm. 
there are people that want to snatch up every share of Jordan Howard late that they can possibly get. There are those that don't want to touch him with the 10 foot pole because they believe Miles Sanders will be a three down back by week three or four and Howard will have unpredictable value. I think that's my fear with Jordan Howard value. Yes. Predictability. None. I can see that happening. Cause yeah. they, he could be a touchdown dependent guy. Uh, Dante Pettis with the eighth round uh, first pick. Daryl Henderson, Drew Brees, Kyler Murray, Sammy Watkins, Cam Newton. Uh, quarterbacks would be gone. Quarterbacks would be drafted. Cam, one of our favorite late round guys, although I'm happy to wait yeah, right for Lamar now, Jackson. Right now you've still got Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Jameis Winston, Lamar Jackson. Tons of quarterbacks Deck. available. So I, I'm not worried there. At tight end, Man, if you told me that Andrew Luck was playing, I, again, kind of like what you were saying, Mike, you, you might project things to go a certain direction, but Eric Ebron being here is somewhat tempting considering after him it's it's a real crapshoot. Maybe you just go you know, with your last pick at a Jordan Reed or Mark Andrews. Um, and then at wide receiver, I do really like the potential that Curtis Samuel has to break out and be a top flight wide receiver. There's, there's a lot of good options here. It's, this is a question of roster construction. We're balanced right now with running backs and wide receivers. Do you look to tight end or keep stacking your flex? Any thoughts of Jared Goff? Uh, think I mean, we can wait around? I think we can wait at least one round. I know he's your guy. He is. I, I mean, I would love to have him on the team. So I don't mind here if you are concerned that someone's going to snatch him up. Maybe he pulled it. He drafted him a little bit early. The two players I'm looking at are Curtis Samuel and Marvin Jones. What about Kalen Balash? He's in. He's also interesting. But I wanted to highlight these two wide receivers from what Jason was talking about. The construction of our roster. Where do we? Marvin Jones is higher in my rankings. I think that the the probability of Jones being a a safe in that twenty to thirty range. I, I think it, there's a high outcome that happens. Curtis Samuel could legit break out, though. His and, ADP is is going up. Yes, as, as it's, it's very interesting. As it should be. I mean, he's the the publicity on him from the industry, the, the fantasy industry has been huge, and all reports out of camp have been glowing, glowing, just showering Curtis Samuel in praise. So, with I'm going to throw it to you, Jason. Oh, with the roster. Well, the question, not oh, the. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the, with the, the the construction of this roster would you take someone who you consider safer in Marvin Jones or would you take the upside play of Curtis Samuel I would take the upside play I think okay. we've got the safety you've got to crack this roster by breaking out and being something special and I think Curtis Samuel could if you were throwing me the pick I know it's crazy but I think I'd pull a ninja here and go Eric Ebron the, p the pick is gone Jason Curtis Samuel was the pick <laughs> Jason that was such a distant past that you were referring to Marvin Jones Geronimo Allison Ebron the Bears defense, much like our celebrity draft, going very early in this one. Larry Fitzgerald, Ronald Jones, Kalen Balaj, Wilson and Goff, so we do not get Jared Goff, David Njoku, and then we're on the board here at 9.06. Um, you still have LaShawn McCoy available, who, by the way, this it, it, don't miss this week of the show, please, or any week ever, but this week in particular, we've got breakouts, bust values, We've got sleepers. My value pick, prequel, it's LaShawn McCoy. I don't hate it. He, it's LaShawn McCoy. He, he told us. He said, I've been told I'm the guy. The evidence so you far in preseason has suggested that he is the guy. Yes. And my value pick of McCoy is fully with the lens of about four games. I don't even – four, five, six games. Even if it doesn't work out beyond that, there is a point in the draft where somebody has to draft LaShawn McCoy – even if you're buying yourself a few weeks. So he was the guy I wouldn't, getting all the first team snaps. They were yep. putting him wide, multiple plays where he was lining up as a receiver. It was cool to see that. Um, I, you just wonder, like, are they are they showcasing him? <laughs> that, look, that thought did cross my mind it's as well. It's been that thought for years. So maybe if they showcase him, sure. I mean, they trade him. Congrats to wherever he goes, maybe. That's I don't true. know. On, honestly, if they trade him, his value doesn't go down to me. Right. In, unless, for some reason, someone trades for LaShawn McCoy to come be your backup running back. I mean, that uh, we've, we've made problems with, with coaches doing rational things before, but that just doesn't make sense. I want to say this. It's the sixth, picks, sixth pick of the ninth round. 
There are only two quarterbacks. You guys would probably say three, but there are two that I'm excited about their upside, which is what I'm looking for here, right? I want a guy that if I draft them and I hit right, I might have a guy for the duration of the season. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. I'm happy not taking one of them here. I'm happy waiting until the middle of the 10th round. But if one of those two guys gets back to us at the 10.07, are you cool taking him? Josh Allen yeah, has been Allen so low in an average draft position. Josh who? Sorry. Josh, oh, thank Josh you, bro. Stallion. Uh, but I don't have the button here, man. Oh. I wasn't ready for that. Josh Stallion. No, no, no. Keep hold, – hold on. Because he runs, we call him Josh <laughs> Stallion. You get it? What's the nickname for him again? I, Josh I, I, <laughs> Thanks, Brooks. Our smoothest drop of all time. Um, but my point is, like, he's going so late that usually in most of these drafts that I've seen, you could just grab him with your last pick. Josh Allen, that is. L Lamar Jackson's been rising, and I think the third you were saying we would consider is Jameis? No. I uh, assumed you meant uh, Dak. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Gotcha. And, yep, if if you really want to have – You got Didi on the board here, too. <laughs> you got MVS. So right now we have four running backs. For the undraftable Corey Davis. That's his new nickname, by the way. Oh, I like the it. The undraftable Corey Davis. The undraftable. I mean, if if it was in if it was the tenth if it if we were in the tenth round, then I wouldn't draft him. Also, I would also not draft him there. Wow. But if he makes it to Adrian the twelfth, Peterson, then I would not draft him. Still on the board. By the way, Alexander Madison seems to have that backup job on lockdown in yep. Minnesota. Yes, just. Throwing that out there as a preseason observation. Yes. Uh, I will have to admit he is he's got it on lockdown, so he should be he should be looked at by Dalvin Cook owners in every single draft. Yes, he's he the, should. He there's only a handful of situations that are actually handcuffed situations where you're like, that should happen. Most of the time it's a waste of a bench spot. Dalvin Cook has had an injury history, never played consecutive, you know, more than you know, five or six weeks at a time. He that's the situation I would actually do. All right, I'm gonna take DD Westbrook. Yeah! LaShawn McCoy goes next, another defense, and we're going to come around to our 10th round pick. Um, no other quarterbacks have gone off the board. MVS, Metcalf, Shepard, Corey Davis is draftable, but not by us. And then we're back on the clock. Both quarterbacks still available. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, um, depending on where you guys have uh, these players ranked. DJX is on the board. Jalen Samuels has been going fairly high. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about Jalen Samuels. I don't think you have to have a discussion about Jalen Samuels that involves James Conner. I don't think that discussion needs to take place. I think the right way to think about Jalen Samuels would be in the same vein that you're looking at opportunity for Moncrief for Vance McDonald or Deontay Johnson, whoever it may be. They need pass catchers. They need somebody to contribute to the offense beyond Juju because Juju's capped. What you got last year in volume is pretty well capped. Look, the, the article that uh, our editor, Kyle, did uh, extensive research on looking at vacated targets and where the where they go, the history emphatically says that teams that have a ton of vacated targets heavily target the running back in that first year following. And I think that, yeah, that could be good for James Conner, but I think Jalen Samuels is going to be involved. He'll be on the field. It's just tough, though, because while he is an, a phenomenal handcuff, you're projecting something you haven't seen that he might be usable with Connor on sure. the field. So it's tough to take him when, you know, I, I guess maybe he needs less to happen than a Devin Singletary that I would consider here. Maybe that's an argument for Jalen Samuels. The couple names I want to bring up, and maybe this is not the point in the draft where you guys are looking at it, but the two – Running backs who are threatening the holdout, Ezekiel Elliott, Melvin Gordon. At what point do you consider taking Justin Jackson or Tony Pollard? Where they may it may be a short term window that they have value. It could be a long term window. How are Andy, how are you viewing those two guys? It's difficult with our team's construction because I'm not looking at them. Let's say if I hit on them, then I'm I'm hitting on them as a trade asset because sure. their value is going to come at the time when I'm starting Joe Mix and Chris Carson, Tevin Coleman, Tariq Cohen. But um, but so to then, me, anyone we hit on at this point is probably a trade asset. Kind of. A lot of the guys we hit on at this point, you hit on Curtis Samuel, his value is pronounced throughout the duration of the season. You hit on Justin Jackson and Melvin Gordon comes back, you lose that. 
Fair. You hit on you hit on that. That's the way I'm viewing it. Is I'm fine taking those guys, uh, but I'm I'm looking through the lens of what am I going to do with them? Even if I'm somehow right, for every good situation, for every James Conner late round draft pick, there are a handful of these ones where people just they're just roster clogs. So I don't know if I'm on that side. I think I'd rather you know see what I have in another player earlier. You know, Josh Gordon. You know, take Josh Gordon here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would, Josh Gordon. It's because his ADP is yeah, not, not fixed. fixed. Fantastic. I would take Josh Gordon in the 10th round, please. 100% of the time. <laughs> now, what about Matt Breida? Matt Breida is, uh, you know. You want to have the whole 49er backfield? That's the question is, do you prefer to have that? Or I'm does fine that, with that. Does that clog it up where you, you know, obviously if an injury happens, you're great. Um, I, th I think both players could be actually startable in certain weeks. Um, but should we be wrong about Tevin Coleman being the starter? Maybe it's Breida and Coleman is playing the Tevin Coleman role from the Atlanta Falcons, Kyle Shanahan system. Um, maybe protect yourself with Matt Breida. Yeah, we well, we took Gordon. He's coming back around to us. Unfortunately, Lamar Jackson is gone. I would like to secure our quarterback yeah. here. I would like to take Joshua Allen. Sure. I'm totally on board. That's the, you know, we said Jameis Winston, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen were the three guys that I was happy to get. Jameis Winston left. Lamar Jackson was off the board. Take Josh Allen. Who would have been the first of those three guys anyways? Um, okay, we've got two picks left. One's got to be a tight end. Do you want to take it here? We've got Burton, Jordan Reed, Mark Andrews, Dallas Goddard. I think uh, we all know where nice we're going. It's nice and thin. I think we're all we're all on board with going Jordan Reed at this point. Uh, pick up your defense in your last round, and we'll be set. All right, why don't you, Jason? Why don't you read back our roster? All right, so at share wide, any thoughts that you have at wide receiver. We have Devonte Adams, Robert Woods, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, D.D. Westbrook, and Josh Gordon. That is a loaded re yeah, receiving core. That worked out. At running back: Joe Mixon, Chris Carson, Tevin Coleman, Tariq Cohen. Um, so I, you know, running back would be the place then a little thinner. Yeah. We're a little thinner. Jordan Reed and Josh Allen are our tight end and quarterback. So, um, yeah, I mean, running back would be the one question where, uh, you know, taking DD and Josh Gordon in back to back rounds and not looking at a running back there. Maybe that's where you say, wish we had Brita and Gordon. I, I will say for that. I mean, we have potentially four very usable running backs to start the season. And we know what we're going to be attacking on the waiver wire. So it's because those, to me, at least three of the four are, are in my opinion, very locked in. Cohen certainly could be. I'm confident, even though generally I want to have more running backs than I do wide receivers, I know what I have to address right now. This isn't I don't I don't have to play this wish washy game of uh the, the there's a wide receiver looks great and there's a running back who looks great. I know what I'm doing. I was gonna say there is an advantage to kind of knowing uh, what you have in the bag and what you might need when trading time comes around or waiver right. wire or fab dollars. Um the imbalance can be an advantage if you strategically use it. Yeah. So uh, that is it for today's mock draft. Let us know what you think of it. Head over to YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to see the whole board, all the other teams, let us know uh, if we disappointed you greatly or blew your minds with the incredible stunning picks that we made. And we want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, Bob Woods, Bobby Woods, Robert Woods, mm. signed jersey yesterday, $58.50. Jason turns his head to see what's on the wall today. It's a Mike Evans signed jersey. If he just signs things Bob. Just Bob? Bob. Yeah, it's a little bit too cash. A little too cash. I don't cash. know. It would I don't be think awesome. He, he hasn't accomplished the Bob level. Bob. It's um, me, Bob. Jason no? would know who he is. That's well, for sure. You know who's on the one-name basis? It, we normally just give you the one ox of the day, but Brooks threw this in. It was too awesome. A signed copy of Tech Mobile. Signed by Bo Jackson. <laughs> Got sold on Bristine Auction. Yesterday? I mean, it, it, Wow. That would be so That's awesome. That's really cool. There are a lot of uh, pop culture, uh, yeah. mashups, that type of stuff over there. Check them out at pristineauction.com. Otherwise, we will talk to you tomorrow. Breakout show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Subscribe, review, and listen. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Thanks. 
you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget about them delicious White Castle sliders. You can make them right in your home. You're watching your games. You're like, man, I wish I had White Castle. I don't want to run out, miss the games. Just run to your fridge and freezer, grab them, pick some up uh, from your grocery store, and make it a slider night. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get a dollar off the purchase of any four- or six-pack White Castle sliders.